Hi, welcome to today's review. So the first thing we're going to do is an unboxing and then we'll take a close-up view including a 360 degree view of the locomotive. We'll follow that with a running session and then we'll do a summary uh, scoring section and then we'll finish off with a final recommendation. Okay, let's get into the next section. So we're going to do the unboxing for the Class 68 in the Chiltern livery and um, this is the 4D022003. Um, that's the model we're looking at today. Uh, now this has, I've actually installed the uh, DCC sound in this. I got this as a, a DCC ready model, um, but I was able to acquire the standard DCC sound separately. So that is installed in this model and I will review that as part of the review. So this is effectively a review of the DCC sound version. And um, this is the user guide you get with that. Uh, you get kind of a four page uh, that brings you through the, the various sounds. So that's a pretty comprehensive set of sounds and uh, lighting control. And this does have some interesting lighting control um, in it. And uh, so it does have the directional lighting uh, that you'd normally expect. Um, and it also has these uh, so-called halo lights, uh, which become active when the train is, is idle for a period of time sitting uh, in, a, in a station or whatever. Uh, so the, um, they can also be invoked here. So here are the functions and um, we'll, we'll be trying out some of those later on during the running session. I think the rest of the documentation is just the pretty uh, standard stuff here. It talks about the functions available with the different decoder types. So you do have to we have a full six function decoder to be able to use all of the features. Uh, the halo lamps really being the main main ones that are used on the aux outputs, so you don't get access to those. Um, so you can kind of see the things. And there are dip switches which you can control this under DC as well, the operation of these kinds of lights. Um, there's a, a, a way to access that in the roof, and uh, we'll probably see that uh, in one of these internal switch functions. Okay, there we go. Uh, these are the options then to control the... Um, cab lighting and the various lighting on the, on the locomotive and uh, it's accessed on the top of the locomotive. Okay, so um, these are the um, the sheets you know, and that's the new normal warranty sheet. So I think the first thing is the, um, which I, I like about the, the uh, DAPL models is the, the actual packaging, which I think they come in a, a, a quite a nice presentation box. And then they come in this, um, the standard sort of ice cube packaging, I suppose, embedded within the foam, the foam of this box. Now, one thing that I don't see on this particular model in the packaging is they may actually have some polystyrene, expanded polystyrene blocks at either end as well. These locomotives are really heavy. So this is a very heavy locomotive. They're over 700 grams. Uh, we will do a full weigh-in on this later on. But um, for a, a locomotive of this weight, um, if you were to drop the box, for example, that weight can very often punch through the plastic here and uh, it's good to have some extra protection uh, to protect that locomotive this foam is soft foam so it's not really going to do the job uh, that's in the in the main box so just a, a side point i've seen it on some of the the, the class 773s for example from dapo do actually have it and um, it's something i'm surprised it's maybe maybe it might be on some of the newer versions of the 68s um, that are coming out i, I would assume they're going to learn from not having it there so let's take this guy out of the out of the box and um, comes with a uh, quite a small detailing kit. Maybe the detailing kit is only just giving you the couplers and a kind of an apron for um, the rear end of the uh, the locomotive if you wish to install it. And I'll show you in a minute why it doesn't have many uh, detailing parts because most of the detailing parts are actually on the locomotive itself. Uh, so I'll just take this guy out. Okay, we've uh, got the locomotive out of the box, uh, so let's just take a closer look. Now, the first thing, I guess, is the weight. Um, Dapol locomotives historically are pretty heavy, and I think that's very much the case here as well. So, this guy is is heavy. He's really heavy. I mean, um, so, we will do a weigh-in later on, and we'll capture that in the summary. Uh, but straight off, this is heavier than any typical Batman. Hornby locomotive, Murphy models locomotive. Um, he's got a lot of weight in there. No, there's no doubt about that. So obviously a, a metal, a metal body in there. So um, I think the first thing to note is that this is a really spectacular livery. And um, I did a review of the DRS version of this about a year ago, and that 
that has probably got a brighter, you know, more colourful livery with the compass livery, which which I really like as well. Um, but this is this is really of the same level. It, it it's probably a little bit more of a bland livery, you might say, the, the, the for um, the children livery. But I do like it actually. I do like the silver and the, the kind of grey effect. So it's a, quite a modern looking livery. But the detail in terms of the labelling, the grills. Um, all over the place here. Uh, there's detail inside the grill there, as you can just see. Uh, underbody detail, really good, really nice bogey detail. Look at the lettering on the bogey there. Um, the handrails are, are they're plastic handrails, which is unfortunate. And I've seen these in a used state, and they don't wear as well as the metal handrails, unfortunately. Uh, but really, a lot of detail there again, as well around the door uh, with the handles, um, the, the the little plate there. Um, look at these details here, the labelling. This is fantastic. This is really, really good. Uh, so we, we will do another close up in a 360 on this as well. Uh, but my goodness, this is this is impressive. Uh, really nice fans, separately fitted pieces on the roof there. Uh, nice uh, detail wiper. Um, spring buffers, of course. Uh, so this is the rear of the locomotive. Um, and, and one of the interesting things on this is, uh, I think I commented on the, the, the original review I did of the Class 68. It doesn't come with much of a detailing kit, and that's because most of the stuff is already on here. Uh, so this is the front, and this becomes pre-installed. So all of this level of detail at the front here is actually uh, uh, pre-installed. Um, now, obviously, you may want to take it out if, if you want to make some changes, but... I just think that's really good uh, for someone like me. I'm a little bit lazy and I don't tend to go around installing detailing kits. So um, it's, it's all there. It's great out of the box. And um, again, look at look at this. I mean, look at the labels here. Again, the lovely bogey detail there. And I say we'll do the detail side on, on view here. The horns on top here, separately fitted horns, grab rails at the front. Um, what can I say? This is... Um, this is top notch. This is on the same level as the, the DRS version I, I reviewed last year so in terms of detail. And uh, it is really impressive. My goodness, it's heavy. Um, so, you know, this is it's going to be interesting to see this guy running on the track. But I suppose if I have the experience of the uh, DRS Class 68 from last year, it will be a good runner, a good strong runner, uh, able to, to pull a very large load. And uh, that's really good. So, I mean, I think my impression here, first impressions, um, are of a really nice locomotive, a lovely finish, very quality feel to it, um, great weight in the body, great detail all around the locomotive and the underbody, and um, you know, really looking forward to uh, seeing this guy uh, running on the track. So now we're going to take a close-up view of the locomotive and we're going to start with a side-on view from back to front and uh, you get an idea of the tremendous detail there on the rear of the locomotive, the, the silver end of it, uh, both upper body roof detail and uh, fantastic underbody detail as well. A uh, huge amount of uh, labels and stickers there, a lot of really good roof de detail as I said, another set of uh, grills. A lot of nice, a nice detail in the in that side grill there that you can see through. Uh, and again, a tremendous labelling underneath, and uh, some more grill detail on the roof. Uh, the nice lettering, the the handles on the doors there, are very nicely done, and the uh, grab rails and uh, and stickers on the front. So next we're going to do a 360 view, so this again just to give you another perspective of how this locomotive looks. And I suppose it, it also gives a view of the front and rear ends of the locomotive. Uh, it is interesting that the dark grey end actually is the front of the locomotive. I actually nearly might have preferred the, the, the other end, but when you actually put in the matching uh, uh, rolling stock then you can kind of see the logic behind the colouring. Uh, so this is the uh, the front end of the locomotive. You can see the detailing kit applied at the front there. A lot of nice detail there. Uh, the grab rails at the front, and uh, again getting around to the side, uh, which we've already already seen. And again, a slightly better look at the uh, the roof t t detail here. Uh, those really nice silver fans at the back. 
and uh, overall I think a really impressive looking livery probably not as striking maybe as the compass livery which is obviously quite a colourful livery but I think this in itself has got a bit of class to it and uh, makes it a very attractive livery indeed. So next up we're going to do the running session so we're starting uh, up the engines here I'll say this is fitted with the uh, factory fitted DCC sound. I did pull this from another unit and installed it here. So this is equivalent to the factory installed DCC version that you would get, DCC sound version. And some, uh, definitely some nice sounds and a good selection of sounds on this. And some nice lighting. So we'll get underway and uh, Slow, slow speeds performance and this is, is really really good. You're probably not quite seeing it here. I started off pretty quickly. The coach rake I'm using is a rake of uh, the Tendolino coaches, Mark threes, and it's nearly impossible to get well any any sort of coaching stock to go with this. Uh, there's no native Chiltern Railways coaching stock. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in the summary. Uh, I've also got a, a DVT in here as well, uh, using a uh, DB Schenkner DVT. So we'll move along. See, so there's a nice Mark III uh, kind of coach noise effect there that uh, the, the sounds actually have. It's one of the sounds on that's available. So we'll pick up speed relatively quickly here. Just complete a lap at a kind of a slower speed. So as I said, that's a Hornby DVT at the end. Uh, which does have lighting, which is nice. It's got, it uh, does have a DCC controller installed on it. I think one of the, f because this is such a heavy locomotive, you get this fantastic uh, f feel of the locomotive on the track, this rock solid feel of a locomotive that has this sort of weight. Uh, I'm only running with a four car rake here, but I, you know, I could probably be running with a 10 car rake without any problems. And we're kind of going up to a mid speed now. I don't know if I'd that. Um, well, these coaches aren't prototypical in any way. And the, actually, the Chiltern Railway, the, the silver coaches, um, are really nice. Uh, it's just a pity that they're not available from anybody. Um, these locomotives also pull uh, kind of a blue and grey uh, liveried uh, Mark III's, with, again, with the Chiltern uh, uh, Railways branding on them. Uh, so you could probably get away with the standard uh, Mark III blue and grey coaches for that. A lot of people might have those already in their collections. And so we're going up the speed again to go up to the, uh, the top speed. And just coming through the station, so uh, this is coming up to the maximum speed of 100 miles per hour. Now you get a quite a good speed effect on that particular wide angle camber, uh, but it probably has a slightly muted feel to it, the top speed on this, um, relative to other locomotives. I mean, this is supposed to be representing a locomotive running at 100 miles an hour. It doesn't quite feel like that. Uh, now again, maybe the, the kind of weight and solidity of the locomotive probably gives it a, a slightly different feel. But uh, it kind of lacks that extra kick, is how I might describe it, that you do get on other locomotives at, the, at their top speed. So we're, we're bringing it down to a crawl now, uh, to, to bring it to a stop. And this kind of gives you an idea of the low speed performance, which is really good. And all of this performance is echoed on a standard DC uh, layout as well. So this, whether you've got DCC or running this on analog, uh, you'll get the same level of performance. And we'll bring it to a nice stop. So all in all a very satisfactory running session and a very uh, nice locomotive to run on your layout. Okay so hopefully you found that pretty useful and uh, we'll go to the, the next section of the review. So now we're going to take a look at the summary. Uh, we've been reviewing the DAPOL 4D-022-003S uh, which is a class 68 and the locomotive number here is 68010. They come in three different varieties, one with DCC sound installed, which is the S version, which is what we have actually represented here. Uh, the D version, which has DCC installed and uh, 003 uh, with no letter at the end, which is the 21 pin DCC ready. Does feature directional lighting and the extra features are the headlight and cab lighting. 
and has multiple lighting controls including these the halo uh, lighting options it's an ultra detailed model and with the uh, detailing kit uh, pre pre-fitted she weighs in at a mass of 728 grams uh, which is really heavy uh, if you compare it to say a backman typical backman class 37 would weigh in at uh, between 540 and 550 grams so this is nearly 200 grams heavier than what is a, a relatively heavy locomotive as well um, so that just gives you an idea of the weight of this particular locomotive uh, the typical selling price uh, right now is between 240 and 270 pounds available both new and second hand um, the second hand would be in the kind of 240 or maybe a little bit under that range and uh, new would typically be in the 250 260 270 range and that's as of uh, june 2020 okay so we get into the scoring here so first off on performance uh, i'm giving it a four and a half star and the main reason i'm, I'm just docking it a, a point or half a point is just on that top speed and uh, even if you attempt to configure the cvs they're maxed out uh, already so there is no room to go in terms of the, the configuring the top speed on this locomotive so you can't adjust it so what you get out of the box is the top speed and it is that little bit muted um for a locomotive that can do 100 miles an hour that's the only gripe maybe it's a small one i do like locomotives to have a little bit of a kick as i say um its low speed performance is excellent and as its performance across everything is excellent in terms of uh, uh, points and diamonds and all the usual kind of obstacles uh, that might cause problems S uh, so i didn't have any problems like that with it I, so i'm i'm only marking it down with that lit because of that item uh it, it is a pity it's shared by all of the the dapol class 68s just that slight muted feeling in terms of speed if I, if i compared to say a murphy models class 201 for example you bring that up to its top speed and you really do get that kick in terms of the the high speed performance and you do feel it and you can you can feel it on the track um you don't get that here uh so just a little bit disappointing i would have liked to have got that um the appearance i'm giving it a, a four and a half star overall i think it is a really good appearance it's a very detailed model uh i think the only little things that i might comment on are is, is the handrails are all plastic and they don't wear well so um you do need to be careful with them um either between breakage uh, or between actual just the paint wearing off them uh, they they don't age well if you don't treat them very carefully so that's just a note so very detailed model but you need to look after it but it it, it is it does look like a fabulous model there's no doubt about that uh, the sound I'm giving a four star, which is a pretty good score, and that's based on on my revised standards of sound. Uh, I would have given a four and a half star previously, but with the kind of the benchmark on sound, I, I would say having gone up in the uh, in our model railways going forward, uh, that's just gone down a notch as a result. Still a very passable sound offering, um, and uh, you know nothing wrong with it, but it wouldn't be up there now with the latest. Uh, versions like some from the Hattons models or the Acura scale models that you're going to see very soon. Um, extra features, four star, pretty high, a lot, a lot of extra detail, a lot of extra lighting detail as well. Uh, the packaging is 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 really good uh, with just that, ex that extra bit of styrofoam I think would help for a model of this weight. It really does need protection. A model like this, it, if it's dropped, will punch through the side of the box and would really damage itself given that sort of weight so you do need to take extra care but overall i do like this type of packaging uh, it's a combination of the kind of ice cube packaging with the foam out outside it uh, and, an, and an extra layer of cardboard and it, that is pretty good i think if they could just add the extra styrofoam at the front to support it in a drop situation that would be really good uh, price value i'm giving a four star and overall a four and a half star and a recommended rating this would be a highly recommended rating but for the fact that the rolling stock is a challenge and uh, it, it, it is a challenge there's no doubt about it the um, the standard Chiltern Railways uh, rolling stock is really nice looking and I'm surprised nobody's done it you can get these uh, vinyl decals that can be applied to uh, an existing Mark III coach uh, to give the uh, delivery of the Chiltern Railways uh, Mark III's and they're roughly around 10 pounds per coach and uh, I haven't tried these I've never seen them actual uh, examples of them um, but you know that's not 
really great. Uh, if you're a huge fan, maybe that is a, a solution for you. Um, but you've got to go and you know take some existing Mark III coaching stock, which isn't cheap. I mean, most it's not easy to even get low cost Mark III coaching stock that you can do this with. And uh, and obviously you'd want to get relatively modern stock because you want them to be good running carriages. So you really don't have a great option. The blue and grey I mentioned, um, they do run with blue and grey. Uh, that has specific Chiltern Railways uh, labeling added to it, a brand, branding, uh, which could be probably added pretty pretty easily. Um, so that may be an option as well, or you could maybe just leave it unbranded and run them with your standard blue and grey Mark Threes. And I think for, for most of us, that might be sufficient. So overall, this is an excellent runner. Um, excellent pulling power really nice looking locomotive lovely livery the, the uh, issue with the rolling stock is is unfortunately there um i've i've used my pretendolino coaches they kind of match the uh, the silver gray um and they i'm happy enough with them but they're not prototypical obviously so that may be an issue for you but if you can get the rolling stock well and good or maybe if you can get some resprays done uh, that might be an option as well you won't be disappointed with this locomotive, it is really, really good. And uh, I think um, Dapol have done a good job on these Class 68s in general. And um, I suppose you will get a, a more um, more usage out of perhaps the, the compass livery version of this uh, locomotive than you will out of this particular one. But I do like this livery and I, I'll, I'll probably be keeping this as well as the, the, the DRS version that I have as well. Okay, I hope you found this a useful uh, review of this uh, very nice Dapol locomotive. And uh, we'll hopefully see you on the re review in the near future. And in the meantime, happy modeling. <laughs>